Would you date a non-vegan? It's hard to date when vegan. Vegans dating non-vegans? How do you make it work? How likely are you to date a non-vegan? I f***ing hate dating. Hey everyone, welcome back. Right off the bat, I'm just going to say, obviously anyone can date anyone they want. There is no one answer to this topic, but it is something I see discussed a lot. I have seen it discussed a lot in vegan Facebook groups and on Reddit. And this video actually was inspired by a couple of posts that I saw on Reddit. So I wanna get into those and discuss the comments. Then I'm going to go into some of my experiences with dating and veganism and just share some of my personal thoughts on the topic. I'll also share some anecdotes from other people in my life and how I think it all supports the idea that vegans can or should at least be open to dating non-vegans. Before we get into it, just a quick request to give my video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, subscribe to my channel for more of my videos, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload. All of these things are super, super quick and easy to do, and they help my channel out a lot. I actually don't really ever go on the vegan subreddit, but this post actually popped up on my home feed and it caught my attention and it was called advice for a breakup with a non-vegan boyfriend so this person writing had broken up with her boyfriend of two years she was vegan coming into the relationship he wasn't she realized over time that she needed her partner to be vegan with her she said i don't want to live in a house of death or raise children who have a father who doesn't believe the same he agreed to give it a try. He even started cooking and eating vegan food more. Then he told her that he couldn't do it and he was lying to himself to keep her. She said that was a deal breaker and broke up with him because what's the point of dating if there is no future? So, so many tears because the love is still there but I know I would have resented him and his lifestyle choices if we stayed together. It seemed like the original poster was pretty young. Seems like she's in college. Honestly, when I first read this post, it made me really sad for some reason. I just felt like pretty heartbroken reading it. I felt very sad for the poster who seemed to be really in love with her boyfriend. Across the board, people's responses were pretty much, you did the right thing, it sucks, but it's for the best. The vegan community is known for being pretty black and white, but I personally see this issue as having a lot of nuance. I understand a zero tolerance policy when it comes to supporting suffering. For me, that's a pretty black and white topic, but I actually think this zero tolerance policy when it comes to interpersonal relationships is not super healthy and can end up even being detrimental to our cause. Someone commented, never date someone who says they are going vegan for you. There is only one reason to go vegan and that's for the animals. Anything else is plant-based at best. I actually don't agree with this. A lot of times people will go vegan or adapt a plant-based diet for other reasons, like for health reasons, environmental reasons, or for someone that they care about. And then the moral and ethical animal rights stuff ends up coming in later. I think a big part of people not wanting to commit to veganism is thinking that they can't live without animal products. But I think once people realize that they can live without animal products, they're not threatened by the moral realities of animal agriculture and they're a lot more open to going vegan. So again, this black and white stance of like, never date someone who says they're going vegan for you, I disagree with because I think that can often be an important step in someone's life, even if it isn't, you know, perfect in our eyes. I thought this was a pretty reasonable comment, but it got downvoted. Couldn't you guys compromise? No animal products at home, the children are raised strictly vegan, and when he is with you and or the kids, no animal products allowed, but when neither of you guys are around, he is allowed to eat animal products. The OP said I would lose respect. If he did that, he wouldn't care about veganism. He'd just be doing it to make me happy. Inside, I'd know he doesn't believe in the cause or see why it's important. I think it's interesting that the concept of just doing something to make someone happy is looked down upon. Like I mentioned before, I think sometimes that can be the initial factor and I don't really think is a bad thing or something to be looked down upon. I do understand that resentment can grow in these situations and I'm going to talk more about that later. I thought this was a pretty funny comment. Give them the old, it's not you, it's gee. Who says vegans don't have a sense of humor? 
I also thought this comment was very reasonable and rational and I had to scroll down very far to find it. I'm going to assume you were not vegan your whole life and you probably changed into it over time, learning and growing. Why not give him a chance? I went vegetarian, then vegan when my other didn't, so I'm speaking from experience on this. It was a five year slow change for her to move over to veganism, but in the end, she did. I never bullied, disapproved, or talked down. Now, if there were other red flags, then yeah, sure, drop it and move on, look for vegan partners, but if this was the one and only deal breaker and you thought everything else was great, then you might have let something go that you may regret down the road. The OP said, I went vegan overnight when I was 14. We dated for two years. He never liked talking about the ethics of animal products. Every time I tried he would get upset and say it wasn't for him. I genuinely don't think he'd ever understand. He was never passionate about the things that mattered, more so just followed my flow. In this situation, it sounded like they were both pretty young and relationships in our early 20s oftentimes don't work out, oftentimes aren't supposed to work out. You know, our brains aren't fully formed in our early 20s. We are very much still figuring out who we are. And it just kind of sounded like the OP got a sense that this wasn't her person and I'm sure that the vegan aspect of it was a huge part, but I would guess maybe her partner's lack of openness or his lack of passion about the things that matter to her um, was the bigger issue. In another Reddit post, someone posed the hypothetical question, would you be open to dating non-vegans? The comments were similarly pretty black and white. Someone said, not wanting to be close to someone who pays for murdering animals is entirely reasonable. Carnists are repulsive. And then in response to, do you only date other vegans? They said, I would if my dating life existed. Mm sideways sad face. Again, I find this sort of zero tolerance policy for anyone who's not vegan very problematic, and I'm going to go into that more in a little bit. Someone said, I can't imagine kissing a carnist. The thought is so gross. I would love to hear from you guys if you are in relationship with a non-vegan. How does that work? Uh, is there like a protocol like, hey, I won't kiss you after you've eaten meat, or you have to like clean your mouth this much, or... How does that work, I guess? Someone else said, it's not unreasonable to only date ethical people. That's basically the same question. If someone is a racist, I wouldn't date them. If they hated women, I wouldn't date them. If they took part in dogfighting, I wouldn't date them. So it makes sense to apply the same principles to all animal abuse for those who don't like animal abuse. There has been a lot of controversy with vegans, especially some inf very influential vegans, comparing animal suffering to various human rights injustices throughout history. I think the problem with that, there's a few problems, I think one of the problems with that is that a lot of the injustices that vegans compare animal suffering to are things that we are decades if not centuries removed from meaning we have all collectively, as a majority of society, acknowledged that these things were horrific and wrong decades, if not centuries ago. And that's not to say that there's no sort of leftover injustices still occurring, but the injustice that vegans are calling out is an injustice that we are still very much in the midst of. Animal suffering in the food system is still widely accepted, it's not considered immoral by most people, and it's brainwashed into us from the time we are born by practically the entirety of society. Therefore, it takes people a lot longer to get there mentally versus getting there about human rights injustices of the past because people have to essentially deprogram an entire belief system that, like I said, has been instilled in them since birth. I think vegans tend to do a little bit of revisionist history in acting like they went vegan overnight, when in reality it was probably a series of events and realizations leading up to you one day going vegan, you know, sort of like that or overnight. And I think that ends up feeding into the zero tolerance of other people who won't do the same thing. I wanted to talk about the concept of vegan allies now this is a term that I have used and it, it, it isn't even something that I heard, I just started saying it to describe people in my life who are not vegan but who are very supportive of me and accepting 
and who I feel like see me in my veganism. People in my life sending me a vegan recipe and saying, hey, this looks really great. I'd love to make this for you sometime. Someone scoping out a new vegan spot in their city and being like, hey, we've got to go here next time you visit. So in the comments of the first Reddit post, there was someone who mentioned vegan allies and then it spurred a lot of discussion and controversy and then that parent comment ended up getting deleted so I can't find it anymore but basically people were saying that vegans are allies for animals because animals are the oppressed group and we are allies for them therefore people in our lives who aren't vegan can't be allies to us because we're not the oppressed and so calling supportive people in our lives allies is incorrect. That led me to looking up the definition of ally in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. One that is associated with another as a helper, a person or group that provides assistance and support in an ongoing effort, activity, or struggle. To me, that sounds pretty similar to how I describe vegan allies in my life. Often now used specifically of a person who is not a member of a marginalized or mistreated group, but who expresses or gives support to that group. Are vegans a marginalized group? Yes, we are. Are we sometimes mistreated? Yep. Are we the most mistreated group in history? Absolutely f***ing not. Are we as mistreated as the animals? No. But that doesn't mean that the people who express or give their support to us cannot be considered allies, in my opinion. And just relating it back to the topic at hand, I definitely think that a non-vegan romantic partner can absolutely be an ally and can be a very integral and supportive part of our lives as vegans. And I don't think it's fair to completely dismiss them or write them off just because they aren't currently vegan. So getting a little personal here, most of you guys know this, but I am a vegan and I am in a long-term relationship with another vegan. So before I met Paul, my boyfriend, I had actually never been in a serious long-term relationship. I had dated casually, I had had shorter relationships, or now I think we would call them situationships, but I had never even gone on a date with a vegetarian, much less a vegan. And so I just always, always assumed that I would end up with a meat eater. Like, I just didn't really think there was any other option. Because I never thought it was possible, I wasn't seeking out a vegan partner. Paul and I met through friends at a party, and I had no idea that he was vegan or vegetarian, and he had no idea that I was. We just were attracted to each other. At the time we met Paul, I would say ate 95% vegan. He would occasionally eat cheese on pizza. So on our first date, I was shocked to find out that he was vegetarian, mostly vegan, and I think he was shocked to find out that I was vegan. Just like me, he had kind of been back and forth a few times between vegetarian and vegan, and I just kind of knew, I was like, he's gonna go back to being vegan, like, I'm gonna influence him. I grew up eating meat until I was 17, but Paul had actually been raised vegetarian, so he's been vegetarian his entire life. Paul had actually been in a few serious relationships before meeting me, and in some of these relationships, the person ended up going vegetarian because of Paul, which wasn't something that he had asked them to do, implied he wanted them to do anything like that. And he shared with me that he actually did feel like there was some resentment because of that. But I still think that even with that resentment, even if the person, you know, only changes their diet for their partner and then goes back to eating meat, I still think that has the potential to have a positive impact. While the partner maybe did go vegetarian for the other partner, they still ended up probably trying a lot of food they never would have tried before, going to restaurants they never would have gone to, learning to cook vegetarian or vegan meals they never would have cooked before. Maybe that experience ended up opening the door for them to one day going back to it, or at least being like, I know I could do it because I've done it before. And so that's why I have a hard time with the sentiment that someone going vegan for someone else like doesn't count at all or isn't progress in any type of way. If I were giving advice to single vegan friends, if I were online dating, I would make the fact that I'm vegan a prominent part of my profile. Not in a way of like scaring people away or like, if you're not vegan, like f off or something like that, but just being like, this is who I am and being proud of it. Kind of leading with that, you're automatically going to be weeding out people who are 
put off by or totally closed-minded about veganism. And then I think things like getting involved in your local community in whatever way you can, volunteering at, you know, sanctuaries or in some other type of activism, uh, going to local events, going to festivals. I feel like going to vegan festivals would be such a good way to meet someone, if not totally vegan, then someone very open-minded to veganism. I have heard that it's harder for straight women to meet a straight vegan male than for the opposite. I can't really speak to that, but I could see that being true. I actually know quite a few vegan women whose partners are not completely vegan or were not vegan when they met. But by dating these women, the men either were influenced to go vegan or at least mostly eat plant-based, I would say, a majority of the time. You know, most of these friends that I have, like they will only go to vegan restaurants with their partners. If they live together, they only keep vegan food in the house. Because those vegans were open to dating non-vegans, there is one more carnist in the world eating that much less animal products. That impact, I think, cannot be overstated. And so to really drive the point home, let's talk about why I am in favor of vegans dating non-vegans. So I talked about the island metaphor in my unpopular vegan opinions video, which is basically that I see veganism as this island and it's pretty small and we're in the middle of the ocean and we can't really see many other islands from where we are and we should be as vegans focused on building our island out um, making it stronger, making it more powerful, making it easier to get to, and that includes encouraging people to join us on our island. And I think a really powerful way of doing that is exposure. People need to be exposed to vegans, they need to be exposed to our lifestyles, they need to be exposed to the foods that we eat and how we live and yes, where we get our protein from. We might in our dating quest meet someone who is open-minded to going vegan, but they kind of just need their hand held a little bit. I do think that everyone has the potential to be a vegan at some point and instantly blocking them from interacting with us because they're not vegan right now. I'm not really sure who that helps other than the vegan, you know, protecting themselves. And I totally understand how this is something that not everybody is up for. I think a lot of us like to feel safe in our cocoons where we can just totally protect ourselves from animal suffering, but I do think that leading by example can be very powerful. At the end of the day, what are we trying to do? Are we just trying to like stay on our island and like all date each other and like while having a positive impact on the animals, kind of having a minimal impact on all of the non-vegans in the world who are actually the people who are going to end up making a difference once they eventually go vegan. There's this attitude of kind of like, I'm a pure vegan, I only interact with other vegans. And I think in terms of spreading awareness, what good does that do? And I feel like it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that I'm not just saying that vegans should just date anyone just because they're not vegan, just to try to convert them. Obviously it has to be someone that you have an attraction to, have a connection with, have things in common with, someone you could see yourself dating anyway. I feel like chances are if you find someone that you are on the same wavelength with in many important ways, that veganism is something you can also eventually get on the same wavelength about. So those are all my thoughts on the topic. I would love to hear from you guys. If you are vegan and in a relationship, is your partner also vegan? If you are single, do you only date vegans? Would you date someone who's not vegan, but who is open to or curious about it? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more of my videos and I will see you again soon. Bye.